Hey Sprout Up Scientists, Polar Bear here. Welcome to this week on Sprout Up Explorers. We're so excited to have you guys here with us today. So today we are gonna be talking about freshwater ecosystems. Now, before we get started, I think it's important that we go over what an ecosystem is. So, an ecosystem is a really big community of living and non-living things. Some of those living things might be plants, animals, trees, mushrooms, bacteria, insects, and non-living things in an ecosystem would be things like rocks, soil, water, air, and sunshine. The relationship between living things and non-living things is what makes an ecosystem. An ecosystem can be as small as your backyard and as big as the open ocean. So Sprout Up Scientists, why do we care about ecosystems? Scientists love to study ecosystems because they help us understand the really interconnected relationships between living things in nature and in the world. Now, the relationship between living things is a very delicate thing. It's in a balance between all the other living things and non-living things within that ecosystem. Ecosystems that have a very big diversity of animals and plants and other living things, we would refer to as biodiverse. Now, biodiversity is a fancy term scientists use to describe diversity of life in a given area. So ecosystems that have a really high biodiversity, meaning they have a very wide range of different animals and plants, would be technically healthier and happier. So now that we've got our background information about ecosystems and biodiversity, we are ready to dive in to the fresh water ecosystems we will be exploring today. So water or aquatic ecosystems technically fall into two different categories. The first category would be saltwater ecosystems. Now that is the ocean and the ocean is so big, you guys, it's about 70% of the earth's surface. So we're gonna put that aside for right now and we're gonna talk about the second category of water ecosystems and that is freshwater ecosystems. Now freshwater ecosystems can be many different types of water. So that can be a river, a pond, a lake, or even a stream. Now, the combination of both of these two different types of ecosystems, got the salty ocean over here, you've got a freshwater river over here. When those two meet, they form what we call an estuary. Now an estuary contains a type of water that is not salty and not just fresh, but it's actually called brackish. It is both salty and fresh. So it's a meeting of those two bodies of water. Now, one of the largest brackish rivers we can think of is the Hudson River. So today we're gonna to explore the Hudson River as our brackish river ecosystem. And we're also gonna explore a fresh water body, a pond, and we're gonna look at those two closer as well as the biodiversity we can see in and around those water ecosystems. Hey, Sprout Up Scientists. So welcome to this pond ecosystem. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about a pond, what type of water it has, why it's a really important ecosystem, and we're gonna to get to explore some of the living things that actually live in this pond and rely so heavily on this ecosystem to survive. A pond is a body of fresh water. Now, unlike a river, it is actually not flowing. It is a standstill body of water. However, ponds play a really critical role in filtering water when it rains and also water that comes from high places in the mountains before it actually reaches those river ecosystems. So you can think of the pond as kind of that in-between freshwater ecosystem that's really important for holding life, feeding lots of wildlife, as well as filtering that rainwater to make it cleaner for the river ecosystems. Follow this river down over the bridge and down out into the woods probably somewhere with a larger stream that connects to a bigger body of water maybe even the hudson river who knows because we're not that far away let's have a look at some of the really awesome plants that we might find in and around a pond One of the really cool plants that grows along this pond is called moss. Um, now moss is really weird. It's kind of a soft pillowy texture um, and it likes really damp places. So it's a very moist um, plant. It's kind of like a 
sponge, um, and there's moss all along the edge of this pond. Algae is kind of yucky looking at first. It's this um, mushy green looking stuff that's usually floating on the top of a pond. It gives it that green color. However, algae plays a really interesting role in a pond because what happens is it's a plant. So it actually produces lots of oxygen for the pond. So feeding oxygen into the pond as well as playing the role of being the food for a lot of animals that live in the pond. One of those animals that love eating algae are turtles. So turtles that live in freshwater ponds will eat the algae, algae will grow and do other things for the pond. So there you are, that's one relationship that might exist in a pond ecosystem. So now that we've seen some of the plants that grow and exist around the pond, let's check out some of the animals that you might find in and around a pond. Wow, so this is really cool. What you guys are looking at right now is actually a sack of eggs. Mother laid her eggs and they were fertilized. As you can see, some of them are green inside. So there are either baby frogs or baby newts growing inside of these egg sacs. The pond plays a really important role in the reproduction of a lot of things that live in ponds because they actually use the pond water to lay their eggs and have their young and reproduce, helping to build the biodiversity of the pond ecosystem. Great, so we saw some frogs, we saw some animals' eggs, and one other thing that's really big in ponds are insects. So if you guys can watch the weird waves on the surface of the water, it's creating all of these little ripples. That is caused by tiny, tiny insects. And if you look really close, you might be able to see them flying on top of the surface. Insects also lay their eggs in ponds. So in the summertime, some insects like mosquitoes, which I know we're not really a fan of because they give us really itchy bites. Um, they really like still water to lay their eggs. So you'll find more and more insects as the temperature warms up. All right, guys. So thanks for exploring the pond ecosystem with me. They're really, really high in biodiversity. They also filter the rain. So they make the water cleaner when it reaches the river ecosystems. So speaking of rivers, it is time that we move on to our Brackish River ecosystem. So I'm gonna turn you over to our next correspondent and they're gonna tell us a little bit more about the Hudson River and what it means to be brackish. Hi everyone, my name is Turtle and today we'll be talking about different ecosystems and I'm here to show you river ecosystem. Right now we are in Westchester which is about 30 miles north of New York City but it still has this really distinct kind of water called brackish water. So brackish water is a really unique kind of water that allows for very unique ecosystems. So we have tons of different kinds of fish and other animals that make their homes here in this part of the Hudson River and um, it's a huge source of beauty and natural resources. Ecosystems are what we talk about when we're talking about living things and non-living things interacting in a defined spatial area. For non-living things we can find all these rocks on the side of the water, uh, we can find the water itself which is not living although it has a lot of living things in it and for these living things for now you can see this duck right here, all these trees off to the side, um, some plants that are growing off to the side as well, um, and there's tons of other animals like fish and different you know, snails and whatnot that are in the water as well. Hi Sprout Up Scientists, I am Snail and I want to talk to you about a new type of water. But before I do, I have a question. So do you think that places like the Hudson River in New York City or the San Francisco Bay out in California, do you think that those are saltwater or freshwater? Well, both answers are actually a little bit right. So both the Hudson River and the San Francisco Bay are a new type of water called brackish water. So brackish water might be a new word for you, that's totally okay. And brackish water is actually a mix of salt water and fresh water that's also called an estuary. So we're gonna do a really fun experiment together and we're gonna explain how brackish water forms. But before we do that, I wanna show you a map. 
All right, hey friends, so this is a map of the Hudson River. So if you live in New York City or in New Jersey, you live right around here. So if you live in Brooklyn, you're here. If you live in Manhattan, you're here. The Bronx are up here. And the Hudson River flows all the way down here along the western side of Manhattan. So you probably already explored the Hudson River with Turtle. She was a little bit further north along the Hudson River, like up here. And the Hudson River actually begins about 300 miles north of New York City at a lake way up in the mountains. So you can see down here in the smaller picture, this shows in red all of the Hudson River watershed. And it starts at a lake up in the mountains, and lakes are a type of fresh water. So that lake connects to the Hudson River, which flows all the way down south this way. And that's fresh water that comes from the mountains. And then it meets the Atlantic Ocean, which is right here. And the Atlantic Ocean is a type of salt water. So the salt water from the Atlantic Ocean moves around because of tides. So that means that salt water from the ocean flows this way and it meets the fresh water from the Hudson River. And when those two types of water meet, they form a new type of water called brackish water or an estuary. So now we're gonna go do an experiment together that shows how brackish water and an estuary forms. So I just filled this little container from the sink. So what type of water comes out of the sink? It's just fresh water. So this whole tank is fresh water and I put a divider in the middle. And what I wanna do is make one side fresh water and one side salt water. So if I want to make this side salt water, what do I have to add to it? Some salt. So I'm going to add some salt to this side. And we're going to mix it up and give it some time to fully dissolve in the water. And these two types of water look pretty much the same. So I want to add some dye so that they look different. So to this side, I'm going to add some blue dye. So this is now blue salt water. And if you remember from the map, the salt water comes from the Atlantic Ocean, from the Hudson, right? So this side is blue salt water. And I want to make the other side look different too. So I'm going to make the fresh water yellow. Okay, so we now have blue salt water that comes from the Atlantic Ocean and yellow fresh water that comes from the mountains north of New York City. So if I take out this divider, what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to all turn green? Do you think it's going to explode? What's going to happen? Let's find out. Okay. All right, so as you can see in this container, a couple things are happening. So the bottom of the container is the blue salt water. And that's because the blue water added salt to it, which makes it denser or heavier, so it sinks to the bottom. And then at the top, it's kind of hard to see, but the top is yellow. And that's all the yellow fresh water, which is lighter than the salt water. And in the middle, there's a layer of green so that green layer is the brackish water. And that's exactly what happens in the Hudson River when the blue salt water from the ocean comes in, fresh water from the mountains comes down, they meet and they form brackish water. But do you think that the Hudson River is just still like this all the time? No, stuff moves it around. So some things that could move around the water in the Hudson are fish swimming, boats going by, maybe tides, maybe wind. And all of those things mix up the water so that all of it is brackish. All of it is this estuary water. And this brackish water allows all of this biodiversity, all of these animals to live in the Hudson River um, because they need this very specific amount of salt that exists only in brackish water or in an estuary. So another example of an estuary is the San Francisco Bay if you live out in California. 
The Chesapeake Bay is another one. So the only other thing I wanna talk about is the fact that this water is green. So the Hudson River and places like estuaries, the water usually doesn't actually look green. That's just because of the food dye, but sometimes water does look green and that's actually because of something called phytoplankton, which are these tiny little plants that live in the water and actually make it look green. So if you ever see water looking green, it's probably not because it's polluted, it's probably because of phytoplankton living in the river. So that's our experiment. Thank you to Turtle and Snail for showing us um, and teaching us some really interesting facts about the Hudson Water estuary ecosystem, as well as brackish water and what that term means. So without freshwater biomes, you and I would not be standing here today. There are so many things we have to be thankful for with freshwater ecosystems, things like recreational use for swimming, boating, fishing. It gives us our drinking water. Um, they also provide us with jobs, so fishermen and researchers use freshwater ecosystems, and they also give us energy and transportation. We'll travel along rivers. They're really awesome and important places. So because these freshwater ecosystems are so used by people, they also suffer from issues of pollution, which I know is a term that some of you sprout up scientists talked about a couple of weeks ago. So this is especially apparent when Freshwater ecosystems are really close to a big city, just like the Hudson River and Jamaica Bay are. They get a lot of use out of them, especially with transportation and people who use them for recreational purposes. However, there are many people and many organizations out there fighting to protect the waterways, as well as keep them safe for us to use, clean for us to drink, most importantly, really happy and healthy for all of the plants and animals that live within those ecosystems. So. Thank you, Sprout Up Scientists, for joining us today. We had so much fun learning about freshwater and estuary ecosystems with you guys. Don't forget to check out the fun sheet and the second nature activities below for some more fun freshwater activities. We hope that you guys can continue to learn about these ecosystems and maybe do your own research and get involved with some of the local waterways near you. So thanks for joining us again. And now I'm gonna give you props. All right, see you next week on Sprout Up Explorers. Bye guys.